Now, may we speak freely? Yes. Hmm. Greetings, Melissa. Greetings. When are you going to ask the question that's been burning inside of you? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Um, I'm just wondering, how do you deal with worries? Well, look at it this way. There's two ways of dealing with it. One way doesn't work too well. That's worrying. Mm -hmm. The other way is to recognize that you, yourself, have free choice. And if you give yourself permission to have free choice, then everything around you has free choice, doesn't it? And then you're no longer attached to the outcomes of choice. For you recognize that regardless of what occurs, you have the ability to choose again, and again, and again, and again. Oh, and again. Oh, and again, again, again. <laughs> oh, and again. And again, 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 again. You see the point? Mm -hmm. Kind of. Kind of? <laughs> you're not willing to give yourself free choice, are you? too scary. Yeah, mm. that's Why? true. Oh. What are you afraid of? Are you really afraid of being able to just choose? I don't know. I guess so. Mm. Why do you think? I don't, I don't know. Sure you do. Go ahead, dig a little deeper. What is it that you really fear? If you had, if mm, look at it this way, if we came to you and said to you that here's a series of gifts. There's 30 gifts lined up in front of you. You could have any one of them. Which one would you choose? Like out of the gifts? Yes. What do you mean, what are the gifts? Ah, you want to know what they are. You can't know, because they're just gifts. There's 30 of them sitting right in front of you, all lined up in a row. Which one would you choose? See how, see, how much, it's not. see how much you're worrying right now? Yeah. You're worrying about, is it the right gift? Mm -hmm. hmm. What if it's the wrong gift? Did I make the right choice? Do I choose number one? What about number 30? What about number 15? Hmm. Uh -huh. You see? Yes. And you're worrying, aren't you? Worrying, yeah. What if you just chose one? And then, if you don't like it, you choose another. We didn't say you couldn't do that. We just said there was 30 lined up in front of you. And then you could choose another. And then you could choose another. Do you see the point? Mm -hmm. What you do is you try to force yourself to confine your existence to choosing just one. Are you so lacking that you only deserve one? No. Ah. Well, then maybe you loved yourself enough, you give yourself permission to choose one, and then another, 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 and then another. <laughs> Get the point? Yeah. And wouldn't that be fun? Mm -hmm. what, what if you're worrying about like stuff happening to other people? Like well, again, <laughs> if you give yourself permission to choose freely, then you'll realize that they also have the ability to choose freely, don't they? Yeah. And if they have the ability to choose freely, they can choose freely to harm themselves or to love themselves. That's their choice. No, but what about if you're worrying like about um, something happening, like I have a baby girl, like something happening to her or, well, or my husband or... Well, look at it from this perspective. Like stuff out of your control. Is it? Control. Well, That's such a good word. Oh, <laughs> you've really got us going now. <laughs> <Let me smell. laughs> Melissa, there's a really good series entitled Control versus Command. May we suggest you avail yourself of that series? You'll find that that will be the beginning of your journey to letting go of control. All control is, is a, an exercise by your mind to try to contract your existence into the smallest possible thing to ensure your survival. And guess what? After you've done all that, guess what? What? Shit happens. <laughs> yeah. You see the point? Mm -hmm. You can't you control can. the universe. Mm -hmm. 
As much as you'd like to, you can't. However, the more you try to control the universe, the less you allow the universe to give you. If it gives you less, then you're limited to the very little bit that it does offer you. You see? Mm -hmm. And then at that point, shit happens in abundance. <laughs> is it the same, like with anxiety, is that kind of the same thing then? Like it's, it's just another concept of your mind. However, mm -hmm. to assist you until you can move past the mind, there's a number of really good homeopathics that really do work on anxiety. Mm, avail yourself of some of those homeopathics. There's one by Nova, for example, called Stress. Mm -hmm. You see? Okay. Really good for anxiety. I'm going to write it down. Mm. But the Thank best you. Thing, <laughs> the best thing for you to use, really, is the awareness that you yourself, you, no one else, you, you are in charge of your life and that you can choose to love yourself freely. And if you give yourself that permission, you'll recognize that everything around you and everyone around you has the same ability to choose freely. And so you just have to realize that you can choose freely. Yes, even your child, even your child is choosing child freely. And love yourself. How, how do you love yourself? How do you love yourself? Where do we begin? Hmm. This will take approximately 144 years. <laughs> <laughs> And this one doesn't want to sleep for that long. <laughs> Look at it from this perspective. Use Mary's, uh, the, the methodology we gave Mary. Start observing yourself without judgment. Just observe. Don't judge. Don't say this is right, this is wrong, this is good, this is bad. You do way too much of that already anyways. Mm -hmm. So just observe. Oh, I did this. Oh, I did that. Oh, I feel this way. Oh, I reacted that way. Oh, I have this thought. You see? Mm -hmm. Observe your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, your desires, your choices, your interactions with others. Observe that which makes you sad and that which makes you happy, that which gives you joy and pleasure and that which gives you sorrow and pain. And the more you observe all of that, the more you'll come to that appreciation of who you are. And that appreciation of who you are, that's love. Okay. That's love. It's the appreciation. Appreciate your daughter for who she is, not for who you want her to be, not for how you want her to mold her, not for how you want to force her into something, but who she is. She is an incarnated entity that has chosen you as a parent because of your circumstances, your issues, your choices, your desires, your limitations, your frustrations, your love. You see? Mm -hmm. And she's choosing you in order for her to grow and expand and to have an opportunity to experience existence from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Now, she may choose, for example, as an ego personality to forget all of that and instead react to you, and play with you, and get angry at you, and push against you, and come towards you. You see? Mm -hmm. But that's just an ego personality reacting. Deep inside, her soul essence knows why she chose to incarnate. After all, you are a great example. You're an example of complete control. She has to learn to let go of control too. You see? But if you choose to mm, let go of your control, then you become an example for her to also let go. You see? Mm -hmm. yes, I so what do you want to do? Do you want to teach your child how to control? Or do you want to teach your child how to live life fully, lovingly, expansively? Yes, I want to teach her that. Then get the control versus command series. Okay. Got it? Mm -hmm. Good. And don't forget to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, we thank you, dear friend.